Hi, I'm Dennis Phillips, and welcome to Everyday Reloading and Shooting. So let me give you a brief introduction to today's video. There's a photograph here of several loading blocks, and these are pictured with 6.5 Creedmoor shell cases. These are primed and charged with 40.7 grains of H4350 powder. As you know, I was recently at a shooting competition down in Dublin, Georgia, and I was preparing for that, and I had planned to take my rifle, and so I had loaded these rounds to go in, get some practice, make sure the scope was sighted in for 100 yards. And I ended up not taking my rifle because I found out it really didn't qualify for this particular competition. And as you saw in the video, I ended up using someone else's rifle but still was able to shoot. For weeks and weeks, I've had these primed and powder-filled cases sitting on these loading blocks on my reloading bench and so I thought, well, I'm probably doing another seating test, so let's go ahead and get these loaded up. So I did. So the funny thing is, I did the exact same test twice. Only difference is the first time, three weeks ago, I shot three shot groups. This time, I shot five shot groups. And it's kind of interesting, the similarities that you see here. All right, welcome back to the channel. Once again, we're at the Georgia Gun Club's 100-yard indoor rifle range. And today I'm shooting my Saco S265 Creedmoor, and I'm continuing my load development with seating depth on this Hornady 140 grain ELD match bullet. And I'm shooting 40.7 grains of H4350 powder. So we'll be checking the velocities on these. We'll be looking for a velocity node here and for a node where we get maybe two groups close together that group really tightly. And I'll be starting at 20 thousandths off of the rifling, and I'm loading in 5 thousandths grain increments, going from 20 thousandths to 25 to 30, 35, etc. And we'll be shooting 10 five-shot groups. All right, so as always, you're welcome to enjoy the music while I fast forward through my shooting, or you can skip forward to the results that follow, shooting at 100 yards. Okay, there weren't really any here that looked that impressive, but let's bring them in and take a look and we'll see. Okay, I'll say this, that when I was shooting this fouling group, there was one that was a really hard bolt closure. Not sure if it was just accidentally seated longer than the others or what, but it went right here. They're all pretty well scattered. Um, I don't see any really that are an inch. This one's probably right at an inch. And this one has four out of five that group pretty well. But uh, we will take these home, measure these, and get back to you with the results. But frankly, I don't think any of these look very promising. Okay, so I'm back from the range, and I've had a chance to measure my groups, take a look at these, and try to make some sense out of them 
and uh, some of them perform similarly as the previous test. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, I shot this same exact test three weeks ago, except I was using three shot groups, and today I'm using five shot groups, but it's the same exact test, same bullet, same powder, same charge weight, same seating depth on all of the loads. Okay, so we had a few here that I think were kind of noteworthy. On our first group here, we had a 1.35 extreme spread, but you'll see that we've got three shots clustered together right here in a very small circle. And we also had a standard deviation of 8.5. So that might be one that we wanna come back to because that could be a couple of flyers or outliers there. At 25 thousandths off the rifling, we've got a group of 103, but if you look at the best four out of five, we've got a 0.8 inch group there and a standard deviation of 11.2. At 30 thousandths off, we've got a group size of 1.56, even though it's got a standard deviation of 6.5. Still didn't group well. At 35 thousandths off the rifling, this one looks pretty promising because we had a group size of 1.06, but we've got one flyer out here. And if you look at the best four out of five, we've got a 0.67 group size there as represented by the black line there. And then you've got three that are clustered together right here, really tight. And the thing is, you've got a standard deviation in single digits. You've got a standard deviation at 8.5 and you had an average velocity of 26 25.9. So that might be one. Uh, if seating depth doesn't tune the load, perhaps powder charge will. So we're at 40.7. So we might come back a tenth of a grain or two tenths either side of that and go to maybe 40.5, 40.6, 40.7, 40.8, 40.9, and see if we can get that to tighten up a little bit. Okay, at 40 thousandths off the rifling, we've got a group of 1.55. Even though we've got a standard deviation of 3.6, that doesn't look very promising. At 45 thousandths off the rifling, we've got a group of 1.4, so not really tight there. Standard deviation of 13.7. At 50 thousandths off, we've got a group of 1.41 and a standard deviation of 11.8. The standard deviations on these were really mostly good. The highest on these was 19.9, uh, but most of these were pretty good. Uh, at 55 thousandths off the rifling, we've got a group of 0.91, and if you look at the best four out of five, we've got those four shots clustered together in two holes here at 0.53 inches, and we've got a standard deviation here of 13.6. At 60 thousandths off the rifling, we've got a group of 1.83, so really spreading out there. And at 65 thousandths off the rifling, we've got a group of 1.47, but again, if you look at that best four out of five, right there, you've got a group of 0.76 and a standard deviation of 10.8. If you take the velocity averages on all of these groups, you've got an average velocity of 2,629 feet per second, an extreme spread of only 29.2, and a standard deviation of 10.8. So this charge weight here looks pretty good, but we're going to vary that just a little bit to see if we can get these groups to tighten up. Now, if you compare this to the previous target when we were shooting three-shot groups, take a look at this. Okay, so here's the first group from three weeks ago. You've got three shots here. You've got a 0.53 inch group uh, and two shots touching there. From the group today, we had a 1.35 group, but if you look, you've got three shots touching right here, two shots touching right here. Very similar. That's why I think those two could just be flyers or a bad trigger pull or whatever, but... Uh, a change in the powder charge may improve this. Okay, on the second group, uh, today we're at 1.03 with our best four out of five at 0.8 inches. Previously, we were at 1.59. And as I have said before, 
a good group does not guarantee um, a good group the next time out, but a bad group will pretty much promise you a bad group. So for example, here, target number three, three weeks ago at 30 thousandths, we were at 1.57. Today, we're at 1.56. Okay, from three weeks ago at 35 thousandths, we had a three-shot group, and these were all, this was a 0.45 inch group, and these three are just clustered together really tightly right here. If you look at today's target, we had a five shot group, and this is why a three shot group will lie to you because look at this and then look at this. Here's your three shot group. Here's an almost identical three shot group, but when you add two additional shots to it, this is what you're gonna get because the more shots you take, the more those are gonna spread out invariably, unless you're really good and you can put them all through the same hole. Some shooters do, some rifles do, uh, but that's, and that's what we're looking for, but that's not generally the case. Okay, so th very similar, if you look at this target today and the target from three weeks ago, the clustering there is very similar. Three weeks ago at 40 thousandths, we were at 0.68 inches. And again, a good group is not going to guarantee that it will always group well in the future. This one was notable, target number eight from three weeks ago. We're at 1.17 inches, and we had two clustered together right here with the flyer off that was kind of high. And then today, once again, we have a clustering right here together. Even though this was a 0.91 inch group, and a 0.53 best four out of five. Some similarity there that I see. Okay, and so three weeks ago at 60 thousandths, we had a 0.97. Today it was double that at 1.83. And then number 10, three weeks ago at 65 thousandths was 1.53. Today, it was very similar, 1.47, but your best four out of five did group there at 0.76 inches. So anyway, I'm going to run this uh, same thing again. Maybe look at these best loads here, maybe at 25 thousandths, 35 thousandths, and 55 thousandths, and try those at some different charge weights on the powder. And I think that may give us a different result here. All right, so stay tuned. We'll be back with you. All right, thanks as always for checking in. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any ideas, thoughts, suggestions, please leave those in the comments below. I try to interact with everybody that comments. I hope you will also like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.